Thanks for dropping in. Last week I introduced my first Halloween project for 2021, the Twistlock Coffin, a spooky container with a hidden spring-loaded latching mechanism. While closing out that video, I said, in two weeks I'll be back with another Halloween design, but not a Twistlock box. Well, I'm sorry to say, I lied to all of you. I'm back a week early, and I brought this, a Twistlock pumpkin container. In fact, I brought a whole bunch. This cute candy container uses the same mechanism as my other twist lock boxes. The lid won't lift or unscrew, but if you twist just the topper, several latches will release, and the lid will pop right off. Now, unlike my other twist lock boxes, this design is a little less geometrically rigid. The truth is, aside from the occasional banana, see the Donkey Kong barrel puzzle video for more on that, I don't usually model organic shapes be they fruit or otherwise. So creating this pumpkin-esque container in my go-to modeling software was a bit of a learning experience. If you'd like for me to go over that process in detail, let me know and I can cover it in its own video. For now though, let's just say I squashed a few lofting issues and hollowed out this gourd. This project has a couple customization options. For example, just underneath the lid, there's a bit of dead space that runs around the rim of the opening. This is a consequence of fitting a cylinder lock into an approximately spherical volume. To take advantage of that space, the project includes three ring-shaped inserts. One that says Happy Halloween, one that says Trick or Treat, and one that's left completely blank. You can leave this area empty, use one of those inserts, or even take that blank version and design your own. This model is fairly easy to print. Every piece, if oriented correctly, can be printed with zero supports. The model is a bit large though, so I tested out some smaller prints to see how well it would hold up. This 75% scale print works perfectly. If you're printing this for the first time, you may want to consider just going right to this size. Out of curiosity, I tried to push it a little bit further and printed this half scale copy. It's really cute and it does open. But unfortunately at this size, the 3D printed spring doesn't have much pull. So in order to lock it back into place, you have to manually twist the locks. It's possible that you may be able to get this to work with a stiffer filament. Speaking of filaments, I decided to use this design as an excuse to test out all the orange-ish filament I happen to have on hand. First up is Orange Inland PLA Plus. If you live anywhere near a micro center, you've probably seen this stuff. It's an easy to print, low cost filament that I use mostly for prototyping. It's also fine for any project you plan to sand or paint anyway. This one is Hatchbox True Gold. Hatchbox is slightly more expensive than Inland, but the print quality is great. I go through rolls and rolls of this stuff when I'm printing puzzles. My only warning is that their metallic colors are pretty dull, especially when you compare it to the color swatch on the box. Next is this Prusament Orange Pet G. Prusament is a fantastic filament, and I really like how intense the orange came out in this print. Unfortunately, shipping it to the US costs almost as much as the roll itself, so I don't use it that much. And heads up, if you see Prusament listed on Amazon with free shipping, the price has probably been padded by $20 to $30, so you're paying for shipping one way or the other. The last pumpkin is in Protopasta Tangerine Orange. Protopasta has a lot of great specialty filaments, including these glitter-filled colors. It's about twice as expensive as the other options I've mentioned, but I think it's worth it for special prints and gifts. There's a lot of retailers that sell protopasta worldwide, so there's a decent chance you can get it near you without paying a ton for shipping. A bit of a warning though, if you have a Prusa printer, do not try printing with protopasta until you've looked into some known issues with combining the two. I'll include a link in the description to a 3D printing nerd video where Joel and Protopasta go over the problem in several possible fixes. To my knowledge, this isn't a problem with any other printer brands, and it's specific to the modified hot end that's used inside Prusa printers. So which print do you like best? Do you have a favorite filament brand that I didn't mention? If so, let me know below. Next week, I'll be back with a third 3D printed Halloween project. And yes, this time it won't be a twist lock box. Probably. Until then, thanks for stopping by. Thank <laughs> you.